Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. So I've gotten a lot of questions about difficulty when it comes to mining crypto. So I thought I would do a presentation on what it is and how it will affect profitability. So let's get started. So here we are, Mining Difficulty 101. Now hold on to your seats because there is just so much information to cover here. I'll do my best to make it as clear as possible, but just bear with me guys. First of all, to understand difficulty when it comes to mining, we really need to understand the fundamentals of what's going on when we're mining. So the first question I have here is what is crypto mining? Well, if I had to boil it down and give you a very bare bones sort of fundamental response, it would be twofold. First, it would be the process of adding new transactions to a blockchain. And second, it would be the release of new coins as a reward for doing that work. And essentially the work is securing and verifying transactions that are taking place on the blockchain network. How does this work? Well, most people will use their computers to mine cryptocurrency. They could use their CPU, their GPU. Some people will purchase dedicated equipment called ASIC miners, which are specialized for a specific type of algorithm um, that are fine-tuned to do a particularly good job at hashing on that algorithm. And those are all connected to a specific network, whether it be the Bit Bitcoin network or the Ethereum network or the Litecoin network. And they are providing that service of securing and verifying transactions. That's an ongoing process. Now, in addition to that, then comes the idea of solving a block. So we've talked about securing and verifying transactions, adding them to the blockchain, and then being rewarded with new coins for that. But it's not that easy. You see, every coin sets its own block reward and limits for the number of blocks that can be found within a set amount of time. So let's take a look at a real world example. So for instance, here's Luxcoin and Luxcoin has a block time of one minute, which means a new block may be created every minute. And it's easy to do the math here because the block reward is 10. So that is 600 Luxcoins every hour that we can expect to see created through the process of mining. Okay, so we know that Luxcoin is going to allow up to 60 blocks per hour and you get 10 coins per block. So that's a possibility of 600 coins being released every hour. Now that's okay because the maximum limit for Luxcoin is 60 million. So it's almost three times the amount of Bitcoin. So to release that many coins at this stage in the game is perfectly fine. And also it makes it easy for us to do the math, okay? So moving forward here then, what is difficulty? Well, difficulty represents the complexity of the mathematical equation needed to be solved to create a new block. So if you've ever heard somebody say, when was the last time they solved a block? Uh, they're talking about this component. Now, it's also kind of a catch-all term, solving a block, because solving a block also means adding the transactions to the blockchain and getting the reward. So it's a, a three part process, all right? It's not just the two, remember, you know, what's mining, adding transactions, getting the reward. Well, there's a third process here and it's needed based on the amount of coins. Okay, so let's go back to Lux. So remember with Lux, the block time is one minute and the reward is 10 coins. So that would be 600 coins every hour. And here is their network hash rate, which is at 1.63 terahashes per second. And that has set the entire network difficulty to 22,742 giga hashes. And that's a very high difficulty because this amount of hash rate is very high. Why do they do this? All right. There's two reasons why. First of all, they need to keep this on schedule. If the block time is one minute, then they need to make sure that it, every minute a block will be solved. And the other thing is, is that they want to make sure that 
empty blocks are not being created because there, there's a balance between the number of transactions that are ongoing, the amount of hash rate that is available, and the amount of coins that need to be minted every minute or every hour, whatever their block time is. Okay, so that being said then, how do they govern this? How do they make sure that it stays on time? Very simply, they just change the difficulty based on your hash rate. So if you're working with a pool, that has a certain hash rate, then the difficulty is just going up and down based on whatever hash rate is there. This is pickaxe.pro. It's a pool where you can mine Luxcoin and they have some good stats here. I like this last 50 blocks chart over here and in the middle we have a column for difficulty and you'll notice that the difficulty for each block is a little different. So why is that? Well, we have to keep in mind that difficulty is based on hash rate. So right here, we've got 38.5 giga hash. Um, over here on the main stats, we've got 41.1 giga hash. So you can see already there's a little bit of a discrepancy. Uh, so this goes up and down periodically based on who is mining at the moment. Some people may turn off their computers. Some people may um, jump onto the network, you know, so the, the hash rate goes up and down. And as that is going up and down, the difficulty is helping to maintain the block time. Remember, every one minute a new block is added. So that way we have our um, uh, 60 blocks per hour or 600 coins that are being released per hour. And they're trying to maintain that time frame. So if they have more people who come onto the network, that means they have more hashing power. Um, what they do is they increase the difficulty to compensate so that the one minute block time can be consistent. And then of course, if people leave the network, then they reduce the difficulty so that they can keep everything sort of like status quo. So essentially, difficulty is there by design. It's necessary to prevent empty blocks from being created so that excess coins are not minted, which would drive the price down. And it also maintains that a set number of coins are mined every hour. So we talked about difficulty and how that helps to maintain the block time, but what about luck? Because ultimately we know that in order to get paid for doing this, we need to be the ones that f solve the difficulty equation and then create the block and add it to the blockchain. That's the only way to get the reward. So how do we know who's going to actually solve the equation? And unfortunately, the reality is, is nobody really knows. I mean, it's kind of a matter of chance. Um, there's, it's predictable to a certain point in the sense that you can look at your hash rate and you can look at the block time and kind of calculate, all right, I should be mining about X number of blocks every hour. And, you know, you can kind of figure that out. Uh, and that would be a good way to sort of gauge whether or not your pool or your efforts were being lucky or not so lucky. But you know what? If you're unlucky one day, you could be more lucky another day. It's really up to chance, okay? So this is this is one part of the whole process that is uh, hard to nail down. Uh, but we'll do a little bit of calculating to try and uh, make some more sense of that, okay? And keep in mind that uh, if you increase your hash rate, then you're increasing not only um, your odds of finding a block, but you're also increasing uh, the amount of work that you get credit for on the pool. So what do I mean by that? It's really like rolling the dice. If this is you over here with your one graphics card and you're trying to roll a three, well, you may roll a three once every six times. You may roll a three once every 12 times. You may roll a three once every 36 times. It's all a matter of chance. If this dice is not, uh, you know, weighted or anything like that, then, I mean, you can roll it as many times as you want and hey, maybe you find it, maybe you don't. <laughs> but if you increase your hash rate, well, now you've doubled your odds of actually rolling a three. So, hey, we rolled these two, we got a three, we got a six, you know, and then 
roll it again, roll it again. So there, there is a certain, and I don't want this to be like, a, this is kind of a gambling image and the, you're not actually gambling. It's just a matter of random and chance that's factored into the software. All right. This is all built in to the, to the code. It's part of the nature of how this stuff works. So let's crunch some numbers, shall we? What we want to do is figure out about how many blocks we should be able to get with a certain hash rate um, over a given period of time. So for instance, if we were to go to pickaxe.pro, how many blocks should we find within one hour, let's say, with this hash rate of 38.1 giga hash? Well, there's a couple ways we can figure this out. First, we can look at this number and figure out what percentage of the total network hash rate this is. So if you look at the number here, we've got 38.1 giga hash. If we go over to whattomine.com, we can see that our network hash rate is 1.6 or 1.06 terahash. So what we'll want to do is pull up our trusty calculator and plug in some numbers. So first of all, I'm going to put this on scientific so it doesn't give me weird numbers. And I'm going to take this hash rate here, 38.1, and um, I'm going to express that as giga hash. So that's 38 billion, 100 million, zero thousands. All right. So that's the full number. And then I'm going to divide that out by 1.06 terahash. So that's 1060 zero, zero, and then 000000000. Zero, 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 zero. And that gives me this number. And if I multiply this number by 100, then I'll get a percentage. And that would be 3.59%. Or we can probably get away with rounding it up to 3.6. So. The hash rate of pickaxe, uh, it's just gone up, <laughs> but let's stay with that same number. The hash rate here is about 3.6% of the total network hash rate. So we know that pickaxe.pro is capable of mining 3.6% of all the blocks out there. So we can then average that out over a day or an hour. So let's look at an hour. Our block time is one minute. So if it's one minute, that means there are 60 blocks every hour. So to calculate that out, it's real simple. We'll just take our standard calculator here, put in 60 blocks times 3.6%, and we'll see that the number of blocks we should be finding there is 216 Pretty easy, right? So let's go over here to pickaxe.pro and take a look at their history. All right. This block was found eight minutes ago. This one was found 20 minutes ago. This one 35 minutes ago. This one 44 minutes ago. Guys, they have found four blocks within one hour. Their luck is super high right now, okay? And because if the average is supposed to be 2.16, they've practically doubled the average. So they're doing really well over at pickaxe.pro. And that's how you might decide whether or not you would join a certain pool. You might look at their hash rate and see what their actual findings are. So there's the probability kind of slash luck factor, but what about profitability? Well, it kind of works the same way in the sense that we're going to do similar math, but it's going to be instead of the pool's hash rate against the network hash rate, it's going to be our hash rate against the pool's hash rate. So there's a couple ways you can figure this out. First of all, you can just go to what to mine and use the, the calculator they provide you here. Just plug in your hash rate. So I'm going to use 20 mega hashes and then click on calculate. Down here, it basically tells you what you'll be able to make for an hour, a day, a week, a month, and you have some idea. There's another way you can do this. You can basically divide your hash rate by the pool's hash rate and figure out what percentage of their hash rate you are contributing. And then based on the number of blocks that are mined here and how many coins have been rewarded, you'll be able to get an idea of how many coins you should be able to mine 
um, within an hour. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because the luck here has been so good that they found already double the amount of coins that they should within one hour. So that means that you should be getting paid double what you would for one hour, right? So let's take a look at that. Bring out my trusty calculator one more time here. And what we're going to do is divide our hash rate, which is 0.2 divided by 41.2 and that gives us 0 0.00485. And if we multiply this number by 100, we move the decimal place over. That means our percentage is 0 0.485 or 0.49 is close enough. So then all we have to do is figure out what 0.49% of these last four blocks would be. So that's what, 40 coins. All right, so let's do 40 coins times 0.49%. That would be 0.196 coins. So you would, you would get this much of a payout within the first hour uh, of, of mining here as long as their luck continues to be this good. So uh, what's, what's this expressed in LuxCoin? Well, if we look at the price here, it's uh, $6.77, so then um, 0.196. So 677 times 0.196 is about a dollar 33 for that hour alone. So if we look over here, we're seeing a dollar 53 per day. I mean, I suppose that's if, like, you know, you were the only one who was mining by yourself on this network. But because you joined a pool, now you're able to take advantage of the pool's hash rate and their luck factor, which happens to be in their favor right now. And you'll be able to bring in uh, just about this much within the first hour, which is really significant. Now, that might not be all the time, but hey, when it's good, it's good. So uh, I hope that this kind of gives you a little bit more of an idea of why uh, it's beneficial to mine on a pool because you can take advantage of little uh, luck factors like this one. Um, and then on the other side of it, why it might not be as advantageous to mine completely by yourself, because here's the deal. If you're not finding blocks and you're not solving the equations, then you're not getting paid for it. So joining a pool makes really good sense in terms of mining cryptocurrency. And unless you have a ton of hashing power, if you have your own farm and you can really contribute a ton of hashing power, well then more power to you. However, uh, I think for most people, at least, you know, for myself, certainly right now at this stage in the game uh, with, you know, only a handful of graphics cards, um, mining on a pool is perfectly fine and can be uh, pretty decent in terms of profit. So there you go, guys. Everything that I know about mining difficulty, probability, profitability, and how to calculate it. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up. I worked hard on this one. <laughs> and be sure to hit subscribe and ding the bell so that you get future updates. Come join us on Discord. We've got growing community there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.